I'm going to show you two ways to film inside a microwave and along the way I'm going to show you the easiest way to make a plasma in a microwave. None of this cutting a grape in half or lighting a match or anything like that. Guaranteed plasma in a microwave every time. It all started with a WhatsApp conversation that I had with my wife Leanne when she was out for the evening and I was in the house on my own. At 10.33 I sent this message. I think I figured out how to film inside a microwave. I'm going to have a play. She replied almost immediately saying, exciting, try not to break the microwave, smiley face. You might assume that that message is passive aggressive if you don't know Leanne, but uh, it's not. She really supports my... Two minutes later at 10.35, I sent this message. Two minutes, it was, it was very sudden. I thought I'd figured out all the things that could go wrong, but it turns out there were some unknown unknowns. Anyway, she replied saying, fixable, question mark. It's a good question, isn't it? We'll get back to that in a minute. But the, the reason I wanted to film inside a microwave, and you'll know this if you've seen previous videos of mine, is that there are fun experiments that you can do that involve putting a thing in a microwave. The problem is it's hard to see the results of that experiment as it's happening because of the structure of a microwave door. It's, a microwave door is made of several layers, at least two layers of glass that give you glare and reflection. But most annoyingly, you've got this layer of metal mesh, which, Although it's annoying, it's actually the, the most important part of the door from a safety point of view, because that's the thing that stops microwave radiation getting out of the oven. So my thinking was, if microwave radiation can't get through a metal mesh, maybe I can put a camera in the microwave if I surround it with a metal mesh. And look, you probably know this, you're not supposed to put metal in a microwave. Uh, I mean, I, I question that, given that the inside of a microwave is made of metal. So as a test, I just got, I got a sheet of metal mesh, just a little square, and I made it flush against the inside of the microwave, which is made of metal. I actually put it flush against the, the door, in fact, which, which is glass, not metal, which is maybe why I went wrong, because one corner of the, the metal mesh got incredibly hot, incredibly quickly, and literally in two seconds. And I opened the door, it was glowing red hot, and it had melted the glass. It was a little blob of molten glass. So my plan was, to wait for it to cool down and then just kind of pick it off because I didn't want anyone <laughs> to know <laughs> what I'd done. It turns out that the glass on the inside of a microwave is toughened. And one of the side effects of toughening glass is that if you introduce even a small crack, it will spread very quickly to the rest of the glass, which is what happened when I tried to pick at it. So, I mean, that answers that question at least. But it got me thinking like, why is it that microwave radiation can't get through those little holes in the metal mesh? And it's actually a quirk of wave dynamics. So microwaves are electromagnetic waves and waves cannot pass through a hole if the hole is substantially smaller than the wavelength of the wave. So microwaves have a wavelength of about 12 centimeters, uh, the ones in a microwave oven do at least. Um, and the holes in the metal mesh of a microwave door are about one or two millimeters in size. Why waves can't get through small holes is kind of tricky. I don't think there's an intuitive way to explain it, but it falls out of the mathematics. One of the results is that um, if you take the ratio of the wavelength of the wave to the size of the hole and then raise that to the fourth power, that tells you how much the power drops off. The wavelength of microwaves is about, about 10 centimeters. The holes in a microwave grill in the door are about one millimeter, so that's a, a factor of 100 difference. Raise that to the fourth power, you've got um, eight zeros. So the amount of radiation outside a microwave is 100 millionth of what it would be if the holes were about 10 centimeters across. How does that help us to film inside a microwave? Well, reducing the power of radiation by a factor of 100 million is clearly overkill. We can make the holes bigger. Quick safety warning, modifying a microwave oven can make it dangerous. This is not for children, it's for adults only. And if you're planning to modify a microwave oven, be aware that you should assess the risks for yourself. This video does not constitute a risk assessment. Suppose the holes were a centimeter in size. Well, that's a difference of a factor of 10 compared to a wavelength of 10 centimeters. So 10 to the power of four is 10,000. So if the holes were one centimeter in size, 
the microwave radiation would attenuate by a factor of 10,000 compared to a hole that's 10 centimeters wide. For me, that's fine. And also, it's big enough to put a camera phone in front of. If you subscribe to Cody's lab, you'll have seen a method similar to this one, though he comes in from the side. That video actually isn't available anymore. It's a long story as to why, but the short story is Cody's lab is an amazing channel and you should check it out. I actually skipped a step, which is the removal of the layer of glass from the outside and the inside glass produces glare but actually something else interesting that i learned when i was looking at the safety of all this stuff is that although the mesh stops microwaves propagating out of the microwave oven they actually attenuate over a short distance so right next to the mesh there is some microwave radiation but it drops off exponentially i think that's why you have that layer of glass on the outside of the microwave it actually uh, creates a, a gap between you and the mesh. So as a note of caution, don't put any of your body parts up against the mesh when you're doing this experiment. Especially don't put your eyeball up against the hole. It can cause cataracts. Anyway, that's how I was able to film expanding soap, sparkling CDs and melting glass, but it wasn't gonna work for two other videos that I wanted to make. To explain the second method for filming inside a microwave, think about how a pinhole camera works. You light a scene that you want to take a picture of and light bounces off objects in the scene into the camera. But think about the direction that the light has to go in to get into the camera. So light that's coming off the subject's foot can travel in only one direction to get into the camera, which is this direction. Light bouncing off the subject's head, there's only one direction that it can travel in to get into the camera, which is this direction. So you get this flipped image inside the camera. Here's one that I made, and here's a derelict ship outside my studio. And here it is through the pinhole camera. But there's always a compromise with the pinhole camera, which is that the hole is really small, so there's not much light coming into your camera, the image is really dark. So what you do is you, you make the hole bigger. But the problem with making the hole bigger is now light coming from your scene has a range of directions that it can travel in to get into the camera and so the image is blurred. What's the solution? The solution is to use a lens. If you stick a lens in that larger hole in the pinhole camera, then it will focus the light. It's no longer a pinhole camera because you put a lens in. Uh, the problem with the lens is it focuses objects at a specific distance. Anything in front of that will be out of focus. Anything behind it will be out of focus. And if you know a little bit about cameras, you'll be familiar with this compromise. Like if you want everything in your scene to be roughly in focus, then what you want to do is on your camera, you want to close up the aperture, make it smaller. So your camera is more like a pinhole camera. I can actually demonstrate it with this video. At the moment, my aperture is wide open. So I've got what's called a narrow depth of field, which means that there's only a, um, a kind of short range of distances that are in focus, which is around my face. Anything in front of it is blurry. Anything behind it is blurry, like the back wall. But I can control it from my phone. So look, if I close up the aperture, less light is getting in, so it's getting darker. I'm gonna compensate for that with shutter speed. And so look, the scene's darker, but the back wall is now more in focus and, and my hand is more in focus as well. So how can we use this to our advantage to film inside a microwave? Well, if you've got a DSLR with a really nice lens, like a prime lens, then you've probably got a really low f-stop. You can really open up the aperture. Mine goes down to 1.4, which is definitely enough for filming inside a microwave. And then you focus your lens on the, the subject inside the microwave and the grill will be completely out of focus and it'll just be acting almost like a, a, an ND filter, just like just be darkening the image, which you can then compensate for in other ways. This method is superior to the camera phone method in a few ways. If you're filming something that produces its own source of light, like wire wool, for example, then you probably want manual control over things like shutter speed, ISO, f-stop, things like that, which is often not possible with a smartphone. It's just a better picture as well. You know, a DSLR with a nice lens is a better image, even through a mesh, than a camera phone. And the other thing is, you know, you've drilled one hole in your microwave, 
that's the one spot that you can film, that's the one camera angle that you have. Whereas with the external narrow depth of field method, you can move the camera wherever you want. Which leads me on to the main event, how to make a plasma in a microwave guaranteed. So some methods involve cutting a grape in half and you have to leave a bit of skin. It, it, for me, that works like one in 10 times. It's, it's quite unreliable. Maybe I'm just not doing it very well. But anyway, I found that if you buy carbon fiber tissue and just tear off a little bit, scrunch it up a little bit, stick it in the microwave, you'll always get a plasma. And all you have to do is then stick a Pyrex bowl over the top and you can catch the plasma. <laughs> I've been talking to the creator of the Nile Red YouTube channel about filming in a microwave because he's going to do that for an upcoming video. I recommend you hop over there and subscribe in advance because he makes great videos. This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon and Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a really fun puzzle website for nerds like you and me. They have the best kinds of puzzle, by which I mean puzzles that make you go, oh. Ah, uh, yeah. The best thing is they make you feel smart too because you're actually getting smarter as you do the puzzles. They're curated with that idea in mind and it really shows. I've been working with Brilliant for a while now and they're good people who've made something really special. So I want you to check it out. Give it a try for free today by clicking on the link in the description. And as a bonus, the first 76 people to use that link will get 20% off annual premium membership should they choose to upgrade. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.